So in the last video we looked at the real discovery of germ theory within medicine, okay, the work of Louis Pasteur. And then we also touched a little bit briefly on the sort of development of a new almost competition that happened within the scientific community, which was the sort of microbe hunters. We're going to talk a little bit more about micro hunters in the uh, in the development of germ theory in this video, okay? And we're going to start by looking at vaccines for anthrax and rabies, okay? So in 1877, hearing of uh, Koch's discovery of anthrax, which we looked at in the last video, Pasteur uh, raced to find new microbes. So this is when... Oh, this is annoying. There we go. So when uh, Pasteur joined, joined the microbe hunters, okay? The microbe, microbe hunters. Okay, and Pasteur's assistant Charles Ch uh, Chamberlain, okay, injected some chickens with cholera uh, uh, and that had been weakened, okay, to try and find a vaccine, okay. Uh, the chicken survived. Uh, when injected again, the chicken survived again. So this is basically the, the the process of vaccination, effectively. So process, the process of vaccination. Process of vaccination. And the discovered weak, uh, weaker cholera microbe made the chicken immune. Okay, and they did exactly the same with anthrax and rabies. So. At this point, we find that we have got the process of vaccination for anthrax and for rabies. So, we're starting to see a snowballing effect. Now germ theory has happened, we start to see a snowballing effect of, of, of finding and identifying microbes, identifying weaker, uh, weaker cultures of different um, diseases, and being able to vaccinate. Okay? So when it comes to microbe hunters, really, there were quite a few, okay? And they used the methods that Koch used to discover new diseases, okay? So Edwin uh, Klebs discovered diphtheria in 1883. Uh, Friedrich uh, Leufria <laughs> discovered uh, culture diphtheria uh, and thought its effects uh, that its effect on people was due to a toxin it produced, which was not the case, okay? In 1891, uh, Emil von Behring uh, produced an antitoxin from the blood of animals uh, that had just discovered, uh, recovered from uh, diphtheria. So we're starting to see the development of uh, the, the vaccination of diphtheria. And then in 1902, uh, Ronald Ross received the Nobel Prize for his discovery of how malaria is transmitted. Okay, so now we have got a number of different diseases that have been identified, uh, their microbes have been identified, and the development of vaccinations and possible cures are now in, now in the works. Okay, so that's what really the work of the microbe hunters from the 1880s all the way to the early 1900s uh, really brought into. So, with this being said, we're going to look at uh, Salverson 606, okay? And I'm just going to explain this by just, just effectively reading it and then explaining it bit by bit, okay? Antibodies were identified as a natural defense mechanism against germs, okay? So this is really what the idea of immunization, immune, immunization and vaccination really meant. It was antibodies. As we talked about in the last video, if you get injected with a weaker or dormant or dead version of a, of a virus or, or, sorry, an infection, okay, the antibodies, your body will create antibodies that that will fit that one uh, disease and, and uh, help to destroy it. So next time, if you actually get it for real, the body can produce those antibodies really, really quickly. And they were nicknamed magic bullets, okay? And in 1889, Paul Einrich, okay, Einlick, uh, set out to find chemicals that could act as almost synthetic antibodies, okay? Because if you've got synthetic antibodies, then that could prove very, very useful in the development of medicine. So he discovered uh, dyes that could kill malaria and the sleeping sickness germs, okay? 
Uh, the bacteria that caused syphilis was also identified in 1905. Okay, in 1909, uh, someone called uh, Sak Saka I can't pronounce words, uh, especially names today. Okay, Sahachiro Sahachiro uh, Hate joined uh, joined Paul over here. I'm not going to pronounce last names anymore. Okay, uh, and they tried to find a magic bullet for syphilis. Okay, so this is really what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the synthetic antibody for syphilis and really after what was seen as failed attempts and false checks a compound not called 606 worked as a magic bullet okay and it was used on the first human in 1911 and it was used under the trade name uh, Salvas Salverson 606 which is quite interesting quite a, a fun little uh, a fun little detour in terms of the development of medicine so Really, the discovery of antibodies, okay, and or the so-called magic bullets, and the discovery of being able to use synthetic antibodies to help uh, to help uh, cure syphilis, really, really, really developed uh, medicine even further in the 1900s. Okay, so now we're moving into the 20th century. We're going to start to see the development of medicine at uh, an increasingly uh, fast rate. Okay, because it was almost seen as a revolution in medicine, and we can um, we can thank a number of things for this. Okay, including the the, the two world wars for the for the advancement in uh, medical processes at this time. Okay, and ending all the way up in the present day with what we have in terms of medical development today.